Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with a video that is part of a series of uh, videos covering the next Grant Imahara Steam Foundation auction at Prop Store. Uh, we did one of these a couple of years ago and raised a ton of money for Grant's Steam Foundation. We are doing the same right now. Uh, important links in the description about where to go to bid because there's a bunch more awesome Mythbuster stuff coming up onto the market. But right now I have a show and tell of uh, three props I have not yet cracked into uh, to just open and uh, talk about here. I literally do not know what is in these, although I suspect, I suspect I know what this is simply because I made it. Um, so I'm gonna crack this first. Uh, as we, as uh, we knew the end of Mythbusters was coming somewhere around the end of uh, 2015, we, we had a lot of time to prepare for the end of Mythbusters. And one of the things I did was I went to the camera department and I said, is there like a single box full of all the burnt cameras? And they were like, yes. And they handed me this box literally with like 70 cameras of all different kinds that had been burnt, blown up, destroyed, waterlogged, sand, ingress, every problem you could impart onto a camera we did over the course of the 14 years. And I took those camera parts along with a bin that we had at M7 for a decade called Buster Chunks. Um, and I basically include every member of the crew got a burnt GoPro or other type of camera and some chunks of Buster and some uh, of Buster's burnt. I think that's one of his superhero costumes. Uh, so that was, that was the crew gift that I gave to everybody on the Mythbusters team. Yeah, chunks of buster. It's like a, it's like a, an experimental salsa. <laughs> um, buster, we're gonna do some other videos about buster chunks, but um, we finished shooting the pilots of Mythbusters in the late summer of 2002, and the first episodes uh, aired in January of 2003, and then the show awarded like almost immediately. It rated so high, Discovery was like, we would like 13 episodes immediately. So we started filming immediately. And given that we were barreling down on doing officially what we had spent six weeks the previous summer doing, I was thinking, and I had this conversation with Jamie, that what we wanted was a crash test dummy. We could see that we were gonna do all this human testing and we wanted like a perfect human analog. So I went and did some research and found out that the current state of the art of crash test dummies is called a hybrid three. This is back in 2004. I'm sure there are more modern ones now. Uh, a hybrid three dummy was the state of the art. So I started calling government agencies asking if anybody had a warehouse full of hybrid two dummies they were willing to let me have one of. I've already had this experience before of like, if you're searching for the last year's model, it's often much easier to find because Make no mistake, crash test dummies cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, and I found somebody. This is one of the first bits of really esoteric research I did in the service of the show. Uh, I called a government agency that still prefers to remain unnamed, and they said, yes, we can free up a hybrid dummy, a hybrid two dummy for you if you never tell anyone where it came from. And I wanna tell you, years and years later, uh, Jamie and I were flying to a college appearance and Jamie sat next to the very person that had authorized the figure. And I went back to say howdy to Jamie in his airplane seat. And he was like, hey, uh, this is the guy who runs Blankety Blank. And I was like, oh, we talked on the phone a few years ago. You guys gave us a hybrid two dummy. And he said, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> And I was all like, right, right, yeah. So this is a chunk of that original OG hybrid two dummy. Um, I cannot tell you what explosion rendered him into these chunks. Um, there were many, but this is part of his flesh, yes. And it's a GoPro Hero 2, ladies and gentlemen, a nice old bit of nostalgic tech to go with your chunks of buster. Uh, so yes, uh, wait, I'm not even done yet because there's two other packages. I was literally like getting ready to wrap up. This is one, that is one of the things that will be up for auction. Again, links in the description for how to uh, sign up, how to bid and how to get. Oh, I gotta say one thing in my long association with Prop Store, Prop Store has the best <laughs> Ziploc baggies of anybody I deal with. 
I will wager there are fans that know what this is before I do. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, now, okay, uh, this is a harpoon. I thought it might have come from one of the Shark Week episodes, but it turns out it actually comes from the phone book friction episode in which Tori and Grant were trying to figure out if a harpoon, as seen in the movie Deep Blue Sea, could really shoot over 200 feet and lance itself a great white shark. I know Tori built the shark. I do not think that Grant built this harpoon uh, because uh, I think this is actually a product. And frankly, this is one of the best parts about doing the show is like, you actually got to go look up harpoons and buy some. Um, I'm positive that production bought more than they needed, so there was at least three to five of these on set. Um, in the footage I was just carefully looking at, I can see two different uh, harpoon guns. One that looks exactly like this, sorry, two different harpoons. One that looks precisely like this and one that's got a couple of notches here. Uh, but I don't have any issues saying that I am absolutely confident this is a screen-used harpoon from the Deep Blue Sea uh, section of Phone Book Friction episode of Mythbusters. Look at this. They just Grant got to home, go home that day and say, shot a harpoon today. Uh, if you'd like to shoot a great white shark with this, don't. Don't. Just don't. We won't make any warranties about its efficacy, but besides that, don't go shooting sharks. They are beautiful, beautiful creatures. All right. Oh, broken sword piece. The Shards of Nazrael, the Mythbusters version. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is a beautiful, beautiful piece of kit. Um, what we have here is a genuine uh, katana blade that is properly differentially heated, uh, properly forged to have the correct mechanical properties of a real samurai sword. Uh, and this was used in the Cutting a Sword with a Sword revisit, a myth that uh, Carrie, Tori, and Grant did twice. And... Can we just talk about this machine that Grant built that swung the sword? I certainly built some frightening machines in my tenure on the show. Uh, that sword swinging beast that Grant made is literally one of the more frightening things we have ever produced in the course of making Mythbusters. Uh, the idea that it was swinging one of these at a crazy high rate of speed and that we were swinging it into another sword. <sighs> this is so early. Look at that. 614, 2006. That's 17 freaking years ago right now. Uh, and by the way, this beautiful piece has been actually cracked. This wasn't cut for your perusal. This was actually shattered here and here. And it is signed by, there you have Tori, there you have Grant, and there you have Carrie. Um, that is a stunner of a piece. It's also like genuinely heavy. What? There were stories, there were stories that those guys got to do that I was super jealous about. And same with them, right? Like there wasn't enough time for each member of our team to do all the stories they wanted to do. Uh, I had to give up uh, hypnosis, sadly. I really wanted to do that episode. Cutting a sword with a sword. I really, really wanted to do that, but, but frankly, there was there were this is a grant, a totally a grant story. Um, what a beautiful piece. Also, like lots of opportunities for nice mounting of this. Uh, let me pack this back up. Oh, that is a great piece. Each of us on the team saved key pieces of ephemera that meant something to us. That's what a fair bit of this stuff going up in this auction is, is the kind of stuff that Grant held back for himself. Uh, and the sword piece is totally one of them. 